is mainstreaming in Scottish schools failing pupils with additional needs. The Association of Head Teachers and Deputies in Scotland says it is. Tell us what you think. 08085 92 95 00. Stay there, we've got Chris uh, who's called in and um, I believe, good morning Chris. Good morning Kay. Good morning, you're the head of a, a school for children with uh, support needs, is that right? I am, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, Eleanor, interesting saying there that it's not all about resources in, in her case or in her son's case, she feels, that she's not confident that mainstreaming, uh, even executed um, in the ideal way, would have been right. Um you know, I think there was a reaction against segregation and people have mentioned why they would be uncomfortable with that and there's been this presumption of mainstreaming uh, for now 15 years. Um, have we swung in the other direction uh, and, and not perhaps taken note of the, the subtleties that can be here? I think, I think that's absolutely the case. Um, a lot of children are excluded by inclusion because uh, the children that we cater for here at the new school um, you know, have been through various experiences and every time there's a failure um, with, with our children who you know, have various uh, conditions including autism uh, then you know, it, it, it compounds the problems and it takes that much longer for children to, to, to catch up and um, it would be a wonderful idea to think that every child could be um, educated and supported in, in, in mainstream schools. But um, I have friends who are teachers in mainstream schools who are desperate to get uh, children uh, a proper placement because they are unable to meet their needs. And it, it, it's, it's making, them, making them ill. And um, the government needs to look at two things. They need to look at the children's needs which are not being met by the current policy, and they need to look at teacher recruitment because if teachers are continually put under the pressure in mainstream schools, we'll have less and less, and that, that will cause another problem. So what happens differently at your school, Chris? Well, our, our school operates in, in a way where we accept children into a therapeutic learning community. So the first task is to settle them, to get them to buy into being here and to, to, to start the process of learning. And our, our, our timetable for learning is slightly different. So we, we, we look at um, uh, activity-based things. We look at the, the issues that the, that the children are really interested in and, and put that into the timetable alongside all the sort of normal literacy, maths and sciences. And if I could just say that um, uh, one of the, the issues, one of the things that's always put against schools like ours is, of course, you don't get the proper attainment. Last year, um, uh, a young man who has autism uh, left this school with a grade A advanced higher in English, which wow. was superb. Mm. And we are, pr and other young people got hires as well, and we are really proud of the young people. Um, here they can be themselves, but learn how to be social and learn how to learn. How to learn. Um, the other issue, Kay, that I, I must say is that the damage that the prolonged period of getting an appropriate placement does to parents and to families is enormous. Um, they end up in a tribunal, which is like a court. Mm. That is just awful for people. What, what's, is this a state school, Chris? It's not. It's a, it's a charity. Ah, oh, right. OK. Um, so does it come down to cost, basically? Yes. I mean, I think that local authorities are under enormous pressure because of austerity and because of the, uh, you know, the, the um, inability to raise taxes more appropriately for, for education. Um, uh, and I have very sympathy, you know, a great sympathy with colleagues in local authorities. I've spent most of my working life in local authorities. But it's a false economy because our children who do not get a proper... Um, education go on to require services for the rest of their lives often and you know we, we, if we don't put in the services at the beginning it will be a greater cost later and some of it can be a tragic cost. Mm. I mean do you think we need a, a, a rethink beyond just you know more money? Yes I think it's, it's we need to have a think about the whole issue of inclusion we need to uh, put the money to one side and to actually say, well, in an ideal world, what would we want for our children um, across the country? And, and then look at how we resource it. Um, I, I think if we, if we continue to focus 
on uh, the finances um, that, are, that are difficult now will never get anywhere. Um, I think we first need to listen to people, listen to, to teachers who are saying in mainstream schools, really good, excellent teachers, some of whom I know personally, we, uh, we want the best for these children and this is not the best. Mm. Well, we've got a statement from the Scottish Government. Um, it says children and young people should learn in the environment which best suits their needs, whether that is in a mainstream or a special school setting. Uh, there's a range of provision in place in Scotland to meet the wide range of children and young people's needs. A consultation on draft guidance on the presumption to mainstream education will close later this week. Uh, local authorities just spent over £4.9 billion on education in Scotland. This is 2.7% higher uh, than 2014-15 in cash terms and a 1.9% increase in real terms. Of that, £584 million, 12% of total education spend was on additional support for learning. An increase of 5 million on 2014 to 2015.